Hello, everyone. Hey, welcome to week three coming up. Uh, I hope you've had a, a great time getting into the Steve Covey uh, book, uh, Seven Habits of Effective People, and uh, have been able to learn a few things and to renew some ideas in, in some of those areas. Um, just a couple of things. First of all, let's just talk about groups. Most of you I have assigned to groups. There are some that I have not fully assigned to groups. They're, they're tentative. Uh, some names were left off of the master list, unfortunately, so I've sent emails to some of you for that. But for the rest of you, if you will look at your, uh, your group uh, assignments, I've also indicated a leader for those assignments uh, for this first week. The job of the leader is to make sure that you have uh, noticed everybody of the time uh, and date of the next group meeting for the coming week and provide a Zoom link so that you can have that Zoom meeting. Now, when you have your Zoom meeting, make sure that you record the meeting and post it so that I can look at the meetings I'm not able to attend personally. Now, in the first two weeks or so, I'm going to try to get to everybody's meeting uh, within the first two weeks. Uh, that way, um, I can kind of set a little bit of a, a tone as to how those meetings ought to go. Uh, but mostly, this is a discussion. It's an opportunity for you to start to form a team. Now, remember what Lencioni uh, will be teaching us. I, I had you do that little exercise about your birth order and how many siblings and where you grew up and a challenge that you overcame as, uh, as a youth or as a child. Uh, I would take the opportunity each meeting uh, after you begin with an opening prayer to just say one interesting thing that maybe happened to you during the week or, or just add uh, some other insight into your life for the group. Very quickly, 30 seconds, again, to start to create uh, a, a feeling of trust. The more that we share with each other and are vulnerable with each other, uh, the more we will trust each other. And as you go through this next 13 weeks or so together, that trust will be very important because you will be engaging in uh, certain activities together and you'll want to uh, obviously be in a position where you can speak very candidly uh, in a constructive way uh, that will add to uh, the group dynamic. So that's about the groups. And I will, in the very beginning of this week, we will make sure everybody is assigned to a group. Uh, and you may be starting a little late this first week. And I'll be uh, very lenient this first week on, on the group, uh, you know, being able to meet as a group as you sort those times out and get through it. Um, I've pretty much uh, given you times that you agreed that you could work with, but now you need to get together, uh, get a date, get a time, and get going on your meetings. In fact, your first meeting, you will be talking about a very interesting case, uh, case study that I think will be very, very good for you to have a discussion on. There's the, uh, um, uh, the Google... Uh, uh, what Google learned about teams. Think about teams. We have the Mary Griffin at Derby Foods case coming up, which will be your real first case. That's really a good one because this will be where you actually act as a consultant, right? You'll actually be talking uh, in a letter form or a report form to the person and giving your uh, suggestions. Follow the rubric, just as our uh, as, as we've talked about before, there are some very specific aspects of the rubric that you will want to include and make sure that you are fulfilling. So, for example, when you give an exam, if you give uh, recommendations uh, during your reports or your letters that are, as a consultant, you will be uh, also wanting to tell them that if you follow my recommendations, there are some risks and tell us what those risks might be. Uh, and so be very careful that you include all the aspects of the rubric. Look at it very carefully because that's how you will be graded uh, directly off that rubric. So review it as you write. Um, anyway, that's uh, coming up. Uh, and I want to get the thing about the, the groups uh, in there very much. Um, this last week, we talked about paradigms, uh, the idea of 
uh, a paradigm really is really nothing more than the way in which we look at something and that we can have a very significant change in paradigm as we see things through different lenses, as we observe uh, conditions and we try to take away some of our personal bias uh, and look at it from other people's perspectives, for example. Uh, we can actually change our paradigms based on more facts, more information, and uh, more empathy as we deal with others. And uh, I know that I can think of uh, examples where uh, I, I can remember being very sort of stubborn in the idea that, look, just buck up. You can change that behavior. You can do that. But I found out through some personal experience with people that uh, were very close to me that sometimes they can't just change. It may be that they have uh, a, a chemical or biological or biochemical uh, problem in terms of substance abuse or addiction behaviors, things like that. And it's not just as easy as saying, oh, you can just change. Now, what you can do is you can want to change, but you may need help to do that. And so I had a real paradigm shift from, well, you just make the choice to change to, oh, you want to change, but you can't do it on your own. So let's get you some help and, and be, you know, and basically I became more empathetic about the idea that some people need help and they can't just make the decision to fully change and affect that change by themselves due to other conditions. That could be, and some people are very predisposed to addictive behaviors uh, and some aren't. Uh, I don't understand it personally because I don't have that. That just hasn't been part of my life, but other members of my family have had those kinds of tendencies and they are biochemical and it's, you just can't say change. You have to provide help. And so I became very empathetic to those conditions. That was a huge paradigm shift for me. I started to look at those issues from a completely different perspective. And that's what we need to be able to do, just like the old woman, young woman picture, right? Being able to see it differently through different set of eyes. Uh, we talked about the goose and the golden egg. And uh, you know what? Hold on one minute. Hold that thought. Here's my goose. This was given to me by Steve Covey. Here are the golden eggs. So I got this when I went through a 12-month program with Stephen Covey, and he did some things with our, uh, our company. And this whole idea of the goose and the golden egg, what a great concept, right? I mean, this is something that if you think about it, I want to keep this fellow really happy. This is my production capability. This is my ability to actually produce uh, effectively in my life, whether that, and that can be a relationship, that can be a, a skill set. Those are things I want to keep very healthy because these, I have these for breakfast, right? I mean, the egg is disposable. It's, it's the output or the, the production, but it's not what produces it. You want to protect what produces those golden eggs. Anyway, I just thought I'd show that to you. Uh, I still have that after a lot of years. I think I got that back in the 80s. So that tells you how long ago uh, I've been associated with, the, with this subject matter. Um, I hope that you got a lot out of the seminar uh, uh, case study, the different types of leadership, authoritarian. You know, some people are leaders out of position, right? But does that make them a leader just because they have the title of being leader? The reality is, is that, that there are many people who are leaders who never have the title of a leader. They're not the president of the company, but they may be a leader within their own group in such a way that they have tremendous influence. And so one of the things I like to think about is, you know, a good leader is someone who serves others. In fact, a leader, a good way to measure whether a person is a good leader is, are they building up and lifting up those around them? to become better in their own positions and their own capacity and their own capability. If they're not doing that, 
then I would suggest they're not leaders. They may be managers, but they're not leaders. The leader is going to produce a change within those whom they lead in a way that they are progressing and growing in their own abilities and skills and competencies and capabilities. So uh, anyway, it's good to review the different types of leadership styles and methods, and we'll be talking more about those things as we go through. All right, uh, just a final reminder um, that your meeting as a group should typically be the same time, same day, same time each week. And if you will please let me know that date or that day and time and send me the Zoom link along with that information so that I can join you when I am able to do so. And I will do that periodically, especially in the first couple of weeks, I will for sure come visit your group. And uh, then we will, uh, I will be dropping in from time to time throughout the rest of the, the semester. Um, and it's best if you keep the same link so that it's really easy to, to find you. If you have to change a date or a time uh, or a Zoom link for some reason, please let me know so that I can be informed of that and, and make sure all of your teammates know. I also suggest that you exchange phone numbers so that you can text each other. So if someone's late, you can give them a, a nudge or something like that to, to get online. And please try to be respectful of each other. Try to do that, which will uh, help your group succeed. And it's the old golden rule, right? To do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, your accountability project goes into full swing this week. Um, and, and congratulations to, to you for putting it together. I'm still reviewing many of them and we'll give some feedback on it if I see any issues or problems. I hope you've got your accountability partners. You should be uh, helping two people and two people should be helping you. Uh, and if they're in your group, that's fine too. Uh, whatever works for you, as long as you have people that are uh, who care about your success and that you are caring about someone else's success in this regard. In a way, this reminds me a little bit of what uh, uh, we learned in Come Follow Me this last week. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but in, uh, in section uh, 108, this is a, uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, part where they're talking about, uh, I'm going to use my glasses here. Uh, they talk, they're talking about in section 108 um, about a, a man uh, named uh, uh, Lyman. And Lyman, um, Lyman Sherman, that's his name. Lyman uh, uh, was asking for some direction. And in section or in verse three, it says, arise up and be more careful henceforth in observing your vows, which you have made and do make, and you shall be blessed with exceeding great blessings. Think about that for a minute. You've just agreed to an accountability project. You've sort of made a vow uh, to keep these new habits every day, every week, every month through this course. And I, I just love what it says. It's be more careful. First of, first of all, it says, arise up. In other words, it's an action. You have to do something. You have to arise up and do something, right? And so it says, arise up and be more careful. Be more attentive in observing your vows or your commitments. And if you do, you shall be blessed with exceeding great blessings. Well, I'm going to tell you and testify to you that this is true. This is what's going to happen. You will be blessed in your life if you keep these commitments in this accountability project. Uh, there was one thing that was uh, said about this importance of vows. Uh, all that the Lord requires of us is strict obedience the laws of life, taught President Brigham Young. All the sacrifice that the Lord asks of his people is strict obedience to our own covenants that we have made with our God, and that is to serve him with an undivided heart. Well, that is a great lesson for us. An undivided heart. If you think about baptismal covenants, if you think about temple covenants, any covenant that you've made, you've made a vow to keep it. And an undivided heart in serving God and being obedient to him is all he asks. And the blessings we can't even comprehend. Well, I just want to say also and testify to you that that is true. And that God's expectations are not above 
what our ability is to perform for him and on our own behalf. We've already been given the greatest gift of the atonement by the Savior, Jesus Christ. He's done the work for us if we'll just do our part to be obedient. And now we get a chance to sort of think about vows to ourselves through this accountability project. I hope that you've uh, been thoughtful about this, the kind of person you want to be, where you want to be uh, 13 weeks from now and, and five years from now. And when you are going to be buried, what's your epitaph? That's one of our discussion points this week is, is what do we want people to say about us when we've gone the way of the earth? And if we think about that now and say, well, I want to be known as someone who's kind. Well, then we better start acting in a kind manner today. And that may be one of the things that should be on my accountability project. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to say how much I'm enjoying getting to know you. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the discussion groups coming up. Uh, please try to stay on time and up to date on these things. But I want the most important thing isn't that you get it in on time, but that you do the work, that you make the effort. And I will be uh, uh, very helpful. And, and if you have conflicts that come up during your week, just send me a note so that I can be uh, aware of those things. Everybody has conflicts. Most of you are working uh, and uh, or in school or otherwise. And uh, this should not be a class that, you, even though deadlines are important, the more important aspect of it is doing the work so that you have the experience. And I just want to let you know again how much I appreciate being with you and testify of these things that I've said about keeping vows and keeping them with our Heavenly Father and do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now have a great week. We'll see you soon.